A Seattle-based scientist has successfully recovered missing genetic sequences that were taken from early cases of COVID-19 in Wuhan, China. They belong to a group of hundreds of genetic sequences that mysteriously disappeared from an online database a year ago. According to The New York Times Matter columnist Carl Zimmer, the discovery earlier this month, quote, does raise questions about why original sequences were deleted and suggests that there may be more revelations to recover from the far corners of the Internet. And Carl Zimmer joins me now. He's also the author of the book Planet of the Viruses. Carl, thank you so much for being here. This is just really an incredible. And I'm so curious how a researcher in Seattle was able to recover missing scientific data from Wuhan. Well, everything lives on the Internet. And so uh, this scientist named Jesse Bloom was actually looking at a, at a review of, of information about the early outbreak and saw some listings for some genetic sequences that had been actually uploaded to an online database uh, from Wuhan. And so he looked for them and they just weren't there, which seemed to him kind of odd. And eventually he figured out that the, the researchers who had put it there had then decided to take it down. Uh, and uh, then he was able to discover that actually there are copies of at least some of these sequences that were still sort of as a backup in Google Cloud. And so he was able to see some of this data that had been invisible up till that point. And, and why are these particular sequences so important in terms of, of what can be learned from them? Well, you know, we need to know everything we can about the, this virus, especially in its early stages. You know, so, so this virus is constantly mutating, and those mutations give us clues about um, where it might have emerged, when it might have emerged, and how. And so these were, were uh, sequences that were taken from people who were sick with COVID-19 early in the epidemic. That's all we know from the data from these Wuhan researchers. So this was early, and so that's important. And that gives us a sense of maybe uh, possibly that this virus was circulating for a while before it started to make the news in December when people were getting sick in an animal market. Mm. And, and is there anything suspicious about the fact that these sequences disappeared from an online database? And could there be more of them out there? Well, um, there are certainly a lot of questions. So, it, it, so after um, a lot of inquiries and actually after a lot of attention from the press, um, the National Institutes of Health uh, revealed that uh, th these researchers in, in China wanted to take the data down because they said they wanted to uh, uh, improve and upgrade the data and post it somewhere else uh, on some other database. But it's been a year, and that data is not online again. So there are still a lot of questions about that. And it does raise this more general question of, of how much data might be waiting uh, in maybe in Google Cloud somewhere for researchers to find. And, and quickly, before I let you go, I had a question about vaccines. There have been uh, questions over how long protections from vaccines actually last and whether or not booster shots are necessary. Uh, can you tell us what the new studies show? Yeah, the, the studies are quite encouraging. Um, there was just, for example, a recent study looking at um, what's happening inside of people's bodies who have gotten uh, vaccines of the RNA kind, in other words, Pfizer and Moderna. And it looks like uh, people's immune systems are setting up long-term uh, immune responses. In other words, they're sort of educating their immune cells in a way that could last in terms of protection for years, which is which is really great news. Hmm. That is encouraging indeed. And I know a lot of people are asking those questions. Well, Carl Zimmer, thank you so much for being here and sharing your reporting. My pleasure. Thank you.